Today we will be talking about our research assignment on waveguide filters. We will analyze different applications of the waveguide filters as well as the different characteristics starting with the history of these filters. The idea of waveguides was first brought up by Lord Rayleigh. Lord Rayleigh suggested that if the center conductor was removed from a coaxial transmission line, the electromagnetic waves would still multiply within the remaining conductor. He was also the first person to realize that above a critical wavelength, wave propagation is not possible. In 1932, the first waveguide was created by two people known as George Clark Southwest and J.F. Hargreaves. The first ever filter was created by George Ashley Campbell in 1910 when he created the analog filter design. The filter design consisted of conductors and inductors. Many waveguide filters were made during the Second World War as they were required for radars as well as electric countermeasures. Majority of the work done on waveguide filters was at the MIT Radiation Lab. However, there were still other labs in the US and UK that also carried works on waveguide filters. The initial use of waveguide filters that were for non-military purpose was for microwave links that were also used by various telecommunication companies. They were also used by television broadcasters. However, now waveguide filters are used in satellite communication systems. After the war, a lot of theoretical work was done by various scientists which helped implement different designs of waveguide filters. These theories included the commensurate line theory of Paul Richards, Karuda's identities, and the network synthesis filter approach of Wilhelm Korn. In the 1950s, waveguides were only able to yield a fractional bandwidth of no more than one-fifth. However, Leo Young was able to find a method that was able to produce bandwidths of up to two-thirds by using a quarter wave impedance transformation. There were various filters that were created as time went on which were used for waveguides. In 1965, S.B. Kahn used a dielectric resonator in a waveguide format. The dielectric resonator was able to offer a size-reducing alternative to the huge and bulky waveguide filters. In the late 1950s, two scientists were able to come up with an alternative method of making smaller waveguide filters. In 1966, Craven and Young were able to create methods to design the smaller filters. This was done by the use of evanescent motors. One of the basic components of a waveguide filter is the cavity resonator. It consists of a short length of waveguide blocked at both ends. Waves trapped inside the resonator are reflected back and forth between the two ends. A given geometry of cavity will resonate at a characteristic frequency. This resonance effect can be used to selectively pass certain frequencies. Another component is the impedance transformer, which makes impedance at its output port appear as a different impedance at its input port. In waveguide, this device is simply a short length of waveguide. It has the useful property of turning shunt connected elements into series connected elements and vice versa. Series connected elements are otherwise difficult to implement in waveguide. Tuning screws are screws inserted into resonant cavities which can be adjusted externally to the waveguide. They provide fine tuning of the resonant frequency by inserting more or less thread into the waveguide. An iris is a thin metal plate across the waveguide with one or more holes in it. It is used to couple together two lengths of waveguide and is a means of introducing a discontinuity. One of the main advantages of a waveguide filter over other technologies are their quality of resonators, which is characterized by a parameter called Q factor. The Q factor of a waveguide resonator are in thousands, which is much greater than other technologies out there. This improved Q leads to better performing filters and waveguides with greater stop and rejection. Another advantage is the ability to handle high power and achieve low loss. The disadvantages are that at lower frequencies, bigger waveguide filters are needed, which tend to be heavy and bulky. Also, at really high frequencies, the filters are so small they cannot be manufactured in machine shop processes. Waveguide filters also tend to have a higher cost than other technologies such as microstrip filters. And now we will be moving on to applications of waveguide filters. Waveguide filters are used in numerous places, but in this presentation, we will be focusing more on microwave, um, on waveguide filters used in microwave ovens. And this invention relates to microwave oven used for cooking, particularly to a waveguide filter used in a microwave oven for eliminating harmonic noises created by the magnetron and preventing microwave radiation outside of the heating chamber. 
as seen in the diagram on the slide. A magnetron used in a microwave oven produces frequency components, which, uh, which are heard as noises, other than the fundamental component, although their levels are extremely low. Leakage of such noises from a microwave oven is seriously influential upon other electronic appliances, and therefore various measures are taken in designing a micro microwave oven. Conventional microwave ovens are provided with a filter within a waveguide which conducts the microwave from the, uh, from the magnetron to the heating chamber so as to eliminate noises. Although such a filter arrangement is effective against noises relative close to the fundamental wave, it is not intended in to eliminate higher harmonic components. So here is an example how um, frequency from a microwave oven can, um, can disturb the frequency of another appliance or electronic. Broadcasting, uh, broadcasting satellites have uh, frequency bandwidths anywhere that, uh, that range anywhere from 11.7 GHz to 12.7 GHz, while as um, microwave ovens have a frequency of 12.0 to 12.5 GHz. The broadcasting satellite frequencies coincide with the fifth harmonic. Therefore, a leakage of the, of the fifth harmonic from a microwave oven can adversely affect televisions, uh, sets which are tuned to satellite broadcasting stations. And that will be all for applications. There are many different types of waveguide filters. The first type is a resonant cavity filter. One of the basic components of a waveguide filter is the cavity resonator. The given geometry of a cavity will resonate the desired frequency. Nomenclature for the modes in a cavity include three indices. The first two indices represent the longitudinal y direction of the wave. The third index is used to represent the number of half wavelengths down the length of the waveguide. The second type of a waveguide filter is the dielectric resonator filter. Dielectric resonators have pieces of dielectric material inserted into the waveguide. These types of waveguide filters are made from high permittivity materials. Insert filter is another type of dielectric resonator filter that has one or more metal sheets placed longitudinally down the waveguide. The third type is a corrugated waveguide filter, or, or also known as the rigid Waveguide filter corrugated waveguide filters have teeth that periodically reduce internal height of the waveguide. The fourth type is an evanescent mode filter. Designing filters in evanescent mode has space saving advantages. The last one is an absorption filter. These types of filters dissipate the energy in non desired frequencies as heat. These filters are used when it is undesirable for power to be sent in the opposite direction towards the source. Resonant cavity filters are essential for the design of duplexers, multi-couplers, and pre-selectors. However, their use is not limited to these specific applications. Individual or cascaded cavities may be used for a variety of different interference problems, such as cleaning up the performance of existing filter systems that do not have sufficient isolation or off-channel interference rejection, uh, rejection of signals from other sources. At crowded antenna sites, cavity filters are ideal for uh, quieting noisy transmitters or for preventing transmitter IM mixing. IM mixing is short for intermodulation mixing, which is the undesirable, uh, undesired combining of several signals in a nonlinear device, producing new unwanted frequencies which can cause uh, interference. Some more about the applications. Receiver uh, front end selectivity can be greatly enhanced by the use of additional filtering, thus eliminating many desensitization, IM, and overloading problems. Uh, this is very important. This is very important. When, when used in combination with a spectrum analyzer, a device used to plot input, ver uh, input signal versus the frequency, cavity filters can allow a detailed analysis of lower level transmitter uh, noise. This lower level noise is one of the major sources of interference at multi-transmitter sites. Also, cavity filters can stand alone as uh, can be can act as standalone pieces of test equipment for analyzing many receiver IM problems, and can also help determine the best type of filter to use to, uh, for a permanent fix. As mentioned, one of the things that a resonant cavity filter can be used for is for the formation of a multi-coupler. 
A multi-coupler is used to enable multiple radio receivers, spectrum analyzers, or scanners to share a common antenna system. Uh, this is very important. An advantage of using this multi-coupler is that there is a port-to-port -port isolation, which in turn reduces the possibility of radio frequency interaction between receivers. Another thing a uh, cavity filter can be used for is in the design of pre-selectors. A pre-selector is a term for an electronic device that is inserted between the antenna and the receiver, limiting the range of frequencies that can be applied to it. Adjusting the device to the desired frequency keeps the pre-selector's narrow bandwidth centered at the operating frequency while rejecting or reducing out of band unwanted interference signals. It improves the performance of nearly any receiver, but it is especially helpful to those with broad band front ends that are prone to overload, such as scanners or, uh, or your average receiver. Uh, resonance capacity filters are helpful to this device because it can be used to filter out unwanted high level signals so that the pre-selector does not get damaged. Cavity uh, resonant filters are a type of LC filters, but they differ, now this is very important, but they differ in the fact that cavity filters do not exhibit high losses in signals. However, if this filter, like technically is not an LC filter, but it can be modeled as one. So if you were to model it as a circuit, then the equivalent circuit to model it as would be the LC circuit, which is pretty much an inductor in parallel with the capacitor. Furthermore, in terms of what the resonance uh, capac uh, capacity filter consists of, it consists of a hollow conductor of any geometry, which uh, some are more, more used than others, blocked at both ends. Uh, this is also comparable to a waveguide uh, waveguide filter short circuited at both ends. Uh, also, the interior of the cav uh, cavity reflects waves of certain frequencies and allows others to enter uh, enter the device if they are resonance with are they if they are in resonance with the cavity, so they share the same frequency. While in the cavity, these resonant waves combine with other resonant waves, waves which are also resonant with the uh, with the cavity, and the resultant waves produced have a larger intensity. Cavity resonant filters take many forms. The form of a rectangular box, well, this is this is just an ideal model, a hollow sphere, which is pretty good as a mathematical model, and a cylindrical ring, a cylinder, and even the form of a transmission line, which is pretty common. Taking as an example, the transmission line model of the cavity, uh, the electric fields always lie parallel to the length of the cavity. First, a cavity filter must be able to pass the desirable signal with minimum, uh, with a minimum amount of loss. Second, the filter must reduce or eliminate undesirable signals with minimum with maximum efficiency. An ideal perfect filter of the highest quality would allow us to pass a desirable signal through it without any loss. But of course, since we don't live in an ideal world, there is some loss, and this loss is called insertion loss. Insertion laws can be summed up as how much filtering you actually get out of your cavity filter. Furthermore, another important parameter of the resonance cavity is its bandwidth. The bandwidth is essentially the range of frequencies that your cavity filter will allow through. A low insertion loss results in a wide bandwidth. What are duplexers? A duplexer are switch-like device that allows bi-directional communication over a single channel. In radio communication systems, it isolates the receiver from the transmitter while permitting uh, them to share a common antenna. There are three port devices compri um, comprising a combination of transmit and receive, receive filters with a common antenna port. It must be designed for operation in the frequency band used by the receiver and transmitter and must be capable of handling the output power of the transmitter. A duplexer must provide adequate rejection of transmitter noise occurring at the received frequency. Also, the terms duplexer and diplexer have been used interchangeably for many, many years. Duplexer and diplexer have the same literal meaning, but a duplexer 
has been used with regard to wireless LAN mobile systems and diplexer has been used in microwave system application. Types of duplexers. There are many different types of duplexers. The main ones are band pass, band, re band reject, cavity notch, hybrid ring. The hybrid, uh, hybrid ring, cavity notch, and band pass, band reject design are all found commercially. Each design has its advantages. First, we have a look at the band pass. Far superior for dense site use. The multiple cavity strings provide added selectivity for the receiver. It has higher cost and need for greater um, site space occupancy. It could be tuned multi-frequency transmitters and receivers. Band rejects. Band, reject, band rejects have uh, lower insertion loss than band pass types. Lower cost to manufacture and savings in materials and labor. Where are they used? Duplexers are designed for various applications based on operational uh, frequency and utility. For example, mobi uh, mobile um, duplexers are designed to handle low power and are very compact in size. Base station duplexers are designed to handle higher brace um, radio power and generally designed to be mountable in standard equipment racks. All RFS duplexers are designed to provide high isolation between the transmit and receiver ports.